بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وكفى والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى عما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يسمون على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He revealed in the Quran Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu haqqa Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu attaqu allaha haqqa tuqatihi wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said what could be translated as O you who believe Ya ayuha al-lazina amanu attaqu allah Have fear of Allah Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Taqwa is a little difficult to translate, but the idea is to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, conscious of the potential for punishment and hope for mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, have taqwa of him, taqwa as it is his right that we have taqwa of him. That's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's right. وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّا إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Don't die except as Muslims. Don't die except as Muslims. And it's kind of a strange, it's kind of a strange thing to, to say in a sense because none of us know when we're going to die, right? Like that's not something that's in our knowledge. When we're going to die. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us an order related to that moment of death that we have to be Muslims. And so, wh what do you think we could do? I mean, the, the only thing I can think of, you guys tell me, the only thing I can think of is just to make sure that you're always in a state of Islam. That you're Muslim and that you're always doing everything you can to be in submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today is a special day for our community. If you haven't heard yet, there was a tragedy in this community. There is a young sister one week ago today, just like, just like right now we're having the men's halaqa, the, the youth group is going on, there's the girls' youth group, the you know, boys' youth group, all that's going on. Exact same thing was happening last week, except there's one difference this week, is that one of the girls from the youth group, she's not here now. She was here last week, she was laughing, she was playing, Every, nobody thought anything was wrong, and then she passed away. I think the next morning, I believe. And today was the burial. Today was the burial in Livermore. And uh, the sister's name is uh, Najaya Al Khalifa from the Khalifa family. Uh, her, her father, brother Abdul Haq, he's a member of this community. Her mother, as well, member of this community. And, the, you know, it's, it's a tragedy for our community this happened. So um, I want to, I wanna, number one, let everybody know that that happened. <coughs> we should do dua for, for the girl. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant her maghfirah and rahmah, make her grave a garden from the gardens of Jannah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it peaceful, a peaceful abode for her till the day of judgment. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant sabr to the family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for them. And I want to just share a few reflections and then just open it up for a discussion. Um, a lot of things happened today. Uh, my, my daughter, uh, uh, she, so Sister Najaya Rahimahullah, she was in the same youth group as my daughter. And um, so my daughter obviously was very affected by this. And uh, so, so and, and my wife actually teaches in, in, in for, the, for the girls' youth group. And so uh, Sister Najaya Rahimahullah, she was in my wife's class as well, I think last year. So it affected our family a lot, obviously. So a lot of, you know, a lot of emotions. And then, um, uh, Alhamdulillah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us tawfiq to take, you know, take me, allowed me to take time off of work and then attend her, uh, her burial in Livermore. And so in that process, many things happened. It brought back a lot of memories for me because we, we also had a baby that passed away. 
and then the whole time I was at the cemetery, I kept remembering that, kept reminding me of that, you know, having to bury uh, my own ch child. I'll, and I'll share a little bit of, about what happened there. And um, so it was very intense. And then at, at, at the end of it, I had a chance to see uh, Brother Abdul Haq and, and say salam and, you know, offer some dua. And he, and he said some very deep things as well. Mashallah, very strong brother. My wife had the chance to see his wife, Alhamdulillah, the mother. And uh, she said, mashallah, she's, you know, they're a very strong family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them and keep them strong, inshallah ta'ala. Um, and so I'll, I'll share some of those details if that's all right with you guys. That's, that's all like, I had in mind really for today. Um, is that cool with everyone or? Okay. Um, so, you know, the first thing, I wrote it down a few notes. So, um, like I said, you know, we, we heard about it. It was, it was a massive shock to us. But, you know, when I was at the, at the cemetery today, I started reminding me, I, I was actually talking to another brother from our community here. We, we were both uh, there just waiting for the burial. We were chatting about it. And it reminded me of a, one of the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And my understanding is that the Prophet Sallallahu drew a line. So you can imagine like drawing a line in the sand, right? So it's like a straight line. And he indicated that, that these are the aspirations of people, right? Everybody has aspirations in their life. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to own this kind of car. I'm going to travel here. I'm going to travel there. All kinds of things. People have aspirations in their life, right? That's normal. It happens. So the Prophet drew that line and then he drew another line cutting through that line. Cutting through the first line and indicated this is death. Death. It comes, people have all these plans and aspirations for their life, but then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decides, whenever he decides, it's time for a person to go, that's it, it's over then. Doesn't matter what your aspirations were, that doesn't stop anybody from their death. And that's just reality. And so when we're in these kind of situations, it should be a reminder to all of us what life actually really is about. It's okay, have all the aspirations, alhamdulillah. We should do that, actually. That's a normal thing to do. We should all do that. And that's just part of being a human being. That's part of how you live your life. But always we should keep in the back of our mind that the real point of this life is actually Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And our passage, our means, our road into the afterlife is death. That's the only way to get there. <laughs> you can't get around that. Al-Mawt Tuhfatul Mu'min It's in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Al-Mawt Tuhfatul Mu'min Death is a gift for the believer death, death is a gift for the believer And that reminds me of what Brother Abdul Haq said to me at the, at the cemetery After he buried his daughter in front of me You know, we were at the cemetery Have you, has, have you guys been to the Livermore Cemetery? You've seen it, right? It's a beautiful landscape Especially today, there's clouds and the way the light was shining and, you know, it's green grass. It's a really gorgeous area. And, you know, we're there and, but here we are dealing with, you know, something very painful. To, in fact, there were two, there were two burials actually. Um, we did the first one and then, and then the, the second one was, was uh, Sister Najaya, rahimahullah. So we buried her and then afterwards we were saying salam um, and, and du'as for the to the father, uh, Brother Abdul Haq. And uh, I was, myself was getting personally very emotional because like I said, it kept reminding me of uh, my baby that passed away. That was a long time ago. That was about um, 13 years ago, 13, 14 years ago. And, but he was very strong, mashallah. He was, he was very, very strong, alhamdulillah. And went to say salam to him and, and uh, a couple of my buddies were there too. They're both from this community as well. Their daughters also were in uh, Sister Najaya's um, youth group as well. So the three, so the one, two, three, four, four of them were together. I'm sure there was other girls too, but the, the three, so my daughter and, and, and then the two other daughters were there. And then their dads were with me when we were all saying salam to him. And so we told him, you know, our daughters were, were with your, your daughter in, in the youth group and his face lit up and he said, oh, we, you know, I, I love MCC and, and, you know, things like that, mashallah. And so we're really happy to hear that. And then he says this statement that just, I mean, it really hit me hard. He said, of my five kids, 
she's the one I don't have to worry about. And he pointed to his daughter's grave. Of my five kids, she's the one I don't have to worry about. Why? Because she died at a young age. She died as a Muslim, right? Uh, what was the ayah? She died as a believer. So she, she achieved the goal, alhamdulillah. It's such a young age. You know, so on the one hand, it's tragic. It's, you know, it, it's so painful. On the other hand, it's a relief. That's what her dad is telling, literally told us. She's the one I don't have to worry about because he knows how she died. It's the other kids that you have to worry about. That How are they going to grow up? What's going to happen to them? Bad influence, good influence, all those things we have to figure out. Yeah, I'm saying, obviously, we should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's another lesson. When you, when you have a, that kind of a tragedy, you, you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends that kind of test to you. One of the lessons is that you appreciate what you do have. You know, that's what happened to me. Then, you know, my other two kids, and I was like, alhamdulillah, I have two more kids that are still living. That's a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But at the same time, at the same time, we should appreciate that when, you're, when your child passes away, that child becomes a means for you to get to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. And that's a hadith of the Prophet as well. That, you know, your child, if somebody's uh, child dies, uh, my understanding is that child dies still as a child. And then on the day of judgment, that child then holds on to the parent and says, Ya Allah, you didn't let me spend time with my parent in the world, so now I'm not letting them, I'm not letting them go. They come with me to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. Right? So it's a lot of lessons for us. Um, you know, he, he, like I said, he, he was very strong. Uh, after the, the burial, um, another brother from, from, uh, from the community, he said a few words, and, and they were very touching, very powerful. I, I didn't know this story, and so I thought I would share that as well. It was a very nice story he mentioned. It was just immediately after, um, after the burial. He said that... Actually, he first recited this surah, Abdullah Shaitan Rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتَحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسِ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ إِفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابَا Right? I think I'm sure everybody knows this surah. إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتَحِ When comes the help of Allah and Fatah and victory. وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ إِفْوَاجًا And you see people coming into the deen of Allah in large groups. فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْهُ And so praise, uh, praise your Lord and seek His forgiveness. إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَابَ Definitely He is the one who always accepts the tawbah. Everybody knows tawbah, I assume the repentance when you commit a sin and you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. So he recited this surah of the Qur'an and then he told a story about this surah which is very interesting he said one time in the time of Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu right everybody knows Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu the companion famous companion of the Prophet sallallahu and the second Khalifa after the Prophet uh, passing away so it's from from him this the, the story is about him he went into a um, into a gathering he, I think he said that the, that the Sahaba radiallahu anhu used to have like a a halaqa where they used to meet actually and, and discuss uh, matters of knowledge. And when he, but when he walked in, there were other older men, uh, a sahaba who were, who were men, you know, like, like older. And he walked in with Hazrat Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, who at that time was very young, very, very young. And so the other sahaba objected. They didn't, they didn't like that he was bringing in somebody so young into their gathering. So then Hazrat Umar radiallahu anhu, what he did was he recited the same surah, Ida Ja'a Nasrullah al Fatah, right? He recited that surah to them. And then he asked each of them, what, what do you think this means? How do you understand this surah? So they all started sharing their understanding. And they, it was all about, I'm sure, does everybody know that that surah is famous because it was revealed at the time when the Prophet had uh, opened up Mecca, right? Is that, that's my understanding as well. Yeah. So. They all mention things like that. It has to do with, you know, Fatah al Makkah and those kinds of things. Then he asked Hazrat ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, what do you think it means? What's your understanding? So then he explained, that as a very young Hazrat ibn Abbas, radiallahu anhu, he said, This surah is an indication from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the Prophet has completed his mission and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to be calling him back to himself. 
That's what the surah actually means. Yes, it's in a certain context and it has that whole thing about Islam, but it's actually the meaning is the Prophet now has completed what he was sent to do. And once you're done with your job, what's there left? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to call him back. And so then he said that with every, then this is the, the uh, Imam at the cemetery. He reminded us that every time, every time we have some kind of victory, just like the Prophet had a victory when he conquered Mecca, every time you experience a victory in your life, you should remember that that victory is just bringing you closer to your death. Because think about it, those victories in and of themselves, what value do they have? I mean, really, think about anything that you experience in your life, some kind of accomplishment, inherently what value does it have? Its value comes from what it's going to bring for you in the Akhirah, right? It's just a process of getting you closer to the reality of, of our existence, which is that we're going to die. Allah SWT is going to judge us. And I, inshallah ta'ala, man qala la ilaha illa dakhil al-jannah, inshallah ta'ala we end up in Jannah. Inshallah ta'ala. So anyway, these are just a few, you know, random thoughts about um, what happened today. It's a difficult day, obviously, for, for all of us, for the community. Um, I understand that there's uh, some counselors or therapists that are available for the, um, for, the girls, for the girls' youth group because obviously, you know, they lost one of their, um, th their close sisters there. Um, but that's really all, all I had to, to share. I think we have about 15 minutes. Uh, I'd, I'd like to open it up now if anybody has any, um, anything that they want to share, any, any words, um, you know, I'll, I'll leave it to you guys, inshallah ta'ala. Yeah, I, I didn't, do you guys want to hear the story of, of the, when my son passed away? I don't know if you guys want to hear about, I mean, I learned a lot from that process, but at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want to bore anybody. <laughs> so you guys tell me. Yes. Okay. So, um, sorry, I put you, I didn't mean to put you guys on the spot like that, but, um, yeah, yeah. Tell me. I think he was 15, 14, 15 years old. 15. Yeah. 14. Yeah. Something like that. Reason of? Oh, I don't know myself. I think I, all I heard was that, you know, the family just the next morning, um, she, she, she went to bed and the next morning they found her, she had passed away. Yeah, that's all I know. Again, you know, we can't do enough to, um, you know, I, I request everybody that, um, you know, when, when you get a chance, I mean, in the masjid definitely, but even, you know, in the next few days as you remember her and remember her family to do dua for them. Like I said, mashallah, a very strong family. But, uh, but, you know, like, it, it, it's always painful. It, it's still painful no matter how strong you are. It's, uh, especially for a parent to lose a child, you know. I mean, we have any large, like, mashallah, we have a big community here. Any large community, there's, a, you know, people pass away. It, it just happens. It's, it's normal. But, but w when somebody that young passes away, it, that's not common and that's very painful to go through. Yeah. 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 Oh, like my daughter, you mean? Yeah, I think it's the same. I mean, when she first... Right. Yeah. I... Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean... Uh -huh. Yep, yep. That's more of in Islam, that's that's not how we grew up, like somebody died sure. 
you don't tell out, we have always someone there, right? <laughs> right, right. Because people just cope with it. Yeah, yeah. Now it's becoming more, or kind of a common practice around, when some crabby office, right. around the years, the school or anything, they were always like, they were passing this. So, how effective is that? How is it helpful? Sure. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, I, I don't know what's going to happen. I think they're doing the counseling right now. But I can, I can just tell you what I saw. Um, it, you know, they, they, they seem to have, they obviously were very shocked and sad and crying and things like that. Um, but then, like, in my daughter's case, Tell you my personal usually the the I think they're getting folks from Kahlil Center they, they they're pretty with what what kids are going through and um, I think they, they generally do do a pretty good job but we'll find out you know I'm gonna I'm gonna we'll see what happens tonight sure I mean, I, I'll tell you, you know, when I was, when I was uh, six years old, uh, first grade, one of my classmates got hit by a bus and passed away. And I wasn't there, I didn't see it. But I remember it like it was yesterday, vividly. Like, you know, I was in class, our teacher came in, she was crying, then she told us, hey, your, your classmate uh, passed away. I, I, was six years old. I, didn't, I didn't even know like what that even exactly meant. And um, then I remember thinking the next day that, uh, and he was my friend, and his mom and younger sister came and to get his stuff, and they were crying about it, and it, it affected me, but, but I can, for me at least, I'm sure, I don't know, did other people have other experiences with losing somebody close to you, and how you coped with it? For, I mean, for me, like I keep making a baby that passed away. That was a big thing. I hung out with my parents for a while. Losing a child, that's just at a totally different level. Um, because, you know, the whole time, because what happened just really quickly, he, he had a genetic disorder. So we knew six months into, into the pregnancy that he was going to pass away. And, but we didn't know how bad it was actually. We, we, initially, we didn't know that, that he was going to pass away. We just thought he was deformed. Later on, I think maybe a month or later or so, or so, then they said, no, he has this very severe condition. He's, he's going to probably pass away before he's even born. And that just totally messed us up. I mean, I could not think straight. I was a wreck. And um, he lived for 19 days. And then he passed away. And that, that was really, really hard because in those 19 days, you know, you think to yourself, Ya Allah, take me instead. I mean, you can't even help it. You just, you just, all you're thinking is, even though the child, he was v super deformed, that's why he passed away, because his heart, I mean, every organ was deformed, including his heart. And his heart had, I think, two or three different deformities. Any one of them on their own would have been fatal for him. So that's why they told us he probably won't even be born alive. And uh, anyway, he was born alive, though. And then he lived for, for 19 days. But in those 19 days was enough to get attached to him. You know? So that's why, that's the other reason I was so, like, sad at the cemetery. I thought, subhanAllah, these fa this family spent whatever it was, 14 years with their daughter. And then Allah, subhanAllah, calls her back. I mean, that's really tough. That's really difficult. Um, so, anyway, that, that's my experience, is that... Um, is that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts that kind of test on you, it's a big test because I think naturally as, as a parent, you just wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would take you in place of the child and let your child live. But at the end of the day, but that's what, that's what Islam is all about, right? Islam, submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, anywho, that's, that's how I understand it. But like I said, I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts and, you know, your, yeah. Oh, asthma attack, Allah. Oh, 
Allah ya Rahman. Subhanallah. Yeah. So so yeah. Again, you know, we should all try to do do du'a for her and and for her family. Inshallah, ta'ala. What else? Doesn't see any words for us. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. We we're, were just talking about the, you know, Sister uh, Najaya Rahimahullah and, and her passing away and doing dua for her. And yeah. Yeah, beautiful family, mashallah. Sorry? I mean, yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. Yeah, if you see, if you see, hopefully, I mean, I'm sure they're very busy right now, but hopefully her, uh, her father will be back in, you know, the next few weeks, inshallah, we can all try to, you know, comfort him and, and uh, offer our dua to him in person if we see him. Brother Abdul Haq, his name is Abdul Haq, mashallah. So, yeah. What else? All right. Should we wrap up early, or any anything else? Anybody wants to share? Yeah, please. Can you can you do me a favor and come a little closer? That way, this will pick it up. Okay. It's just like everything we suffer. The Prophet had to go through all that pain, and there was a hadith we were reading about that one time he was sitting with the Sahaba, and his daughter said that her young baby was sick. And he sent a message that it was good to be, I'm just paraphrasing, it's good to be patient. And then after a little while, she sent another message saying that, please come, he's very, very sick. And so he sent a son the Sahaba went to visit his daughter, and she put the baby in his arms. And the baby was in its last breath. So his grandchild in his arm passing away. And, the, and this other Sahaba saw the Prophet and he, and he saw tears coming down his eyes and on the cheeks. He said, what is this, Ya Rasulullah? He said, these are tears of mercy. So it's amazing that, you know, you see all the losses, and you just kind of relate to all the losses the Prophet Sallallahu experienced. SubhanAllah, it's, uh, it's yeah. an example of patience and silver for us. Yeah, let me just repeat it for the mic. Yeah, that, uh, the brother was mentioning the incident where the, was it the grandson of the Prophet Sallallahu Yeah, the Prophet Sallallahu grandson passed away and he was holding him in his arms and he took his last breath in his arms. Yeah. And, uh, and so the Prophet Sallallahu started crying, I guess, and tearing. And so the Sahaba, or the Alam, they asked him about it. And then what did he say? This is a mercy, yeah. This is a mercy. SubhanAllah. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, that, exactly. That's something we should all remember that, um, you know, when we, the, these are tests from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's part of this life that we go through loss and go through difficulties. And um, of course, it, you know, it's always painful. So it's not, I'm not trying to minimize that at all. In fact, we shouldn't minimize that ever. However, what we, what we can do is remember, like you were saying, that the person who went through the most difficulty, the biggest test, is the Prophet ﷺ himself. He went through such enormous tests. Father died before he was born. His grandfather died. His mother died. You know, his children died. His grandchild, you know, died. And he went through so many difficulties and, and losses. And it's, it's just a big trial. It's stuff that, like, you know, if, if any regular person went through stuff like that, I think they would just go crazy. And, um, but, but, you know, that's the general rule. The more Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves a person, the more he tests them. That's just how life works. And obviously that he's, he's rahmatullil alameen. He's Habib Allah, he's the beloved of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can imagine, you can imagine the Habib of Allah, what kind of test is Habib Allah gonna get? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Right? So, um, so, you know, on the, I guess the, from, from one perspective, it could sound scary. You could say, oh my God, you know, the more I love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more the calamities are going to come on me. And that might be true, actually. But on the other hand, 
you're connecting yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's not a joke, that's a big deal. And, and you know what that means is that now you are connected to the creator of the heavens and the earth. Controls everything. The one who's going to be, uh, who we're going to stand in front of on the day of judgment. Right? And that's the best position to be in. That's the best possible position to be in. So, you know, I, I know these things are difficult. Like one thing that really bothers me a lot. I've got two minutes here. One thing that bo me, bothers me personally a lot, uh, um, and I hear this surprisingly frequently, um, I find that, uh, Allah protect us from this, people go through some kind of calamity, just like this, they, you know, somebody passes away, or something very difficult. They're Muslim, they believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but their response is, how can Allah do this to me? And they're angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have you guys ever seen this or heard of this before? It boggles my mind, I don't, I, I mean, I kind of get it, but at the same time, I'm like, what are you talking about? You're, who are you to be angry with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? It doesn't make any sense, you know? But anyway, what we should, my advice to myself and to all of us is to remember that this life is designed to be temporary, is designed to be difficult. It's supposed to be difficult. And if, it, if it's not difficult, something's wrong, right? They say, I don't know if it's true or not, they say, Fir'aun, he never even experienced a headache in his life because his physicians were so good that, you know, that, that's just the kind of stuff they used to give him. He, wouldn't, he didn't experience the slightest difficulty. But that's what made him Fir'aun. Why, why do you think he said, Ana Rabbikum al -ala, I'm your Lord the Most High? Because he, he was never put in that position to realize his weakness in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So these calamities, are, they're a blessing, actually. Right? Al Maut Tuhfatul Mu'min. Death is a gift for the believer. Every prick we get of a thorn, that prick, that difficulty we go through on the day of judgment raises our status. Right? Like we said earlier, your child passes away. That child then comes and grabs you and gets you into Jannah, free ticket to Jannah, inshallah ta'ala. So, anyway, it's nine o'clock. I don't want to keep you guys late, but uh, again, a reminder to everybody please do dua and please. Um, Remember uh, that this is all for, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's not for us. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.